Hello and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Redux. You are watching episode 6, Bucket Sort. Bucket Sort, the sorting algorithm that's not really a sorting algorithm. Now the reason why I say that is because Bucket Sort doesn't actually sort anything. All it does is it breaks down a list into sublists and then you can use another sorting algorithm to sort each individual sublist. The premise behind bucket sort is to actually break down a large sublist into smaller chunks so that each chunk takes less time to actually sort in comparison to the entire list. Later on in this video, I will show you the improvement in terms of time complexity that you can get from bucket sort but right now, we're just going to confine ourselves to seeing possible implementations of bucket sort. So, here's bucket sort at its simplest. Here I have my unsorted list, it contains the numbers from 1 to 8. Let's say now, I break this down into two sublists. Let's say the first bucket is for numbers from 1 to 4, whereas the second bucket is for numbers from 5 to 8. I can then make one run through my list and actually drop the elements into their correct buckets. So instead of sorting one list of 8 items, I'm actually sorting two lists of 4 items. And the way in which I created my buckets makes it easy for me to put everything back together. You see, when 1, 2, 3, 4 eventually get sorted, and when 5, 6, 7, 8 eventually get sorted, I can just put them back to back, and I will get a sorted full list. Now this might seem to be a terribly roundabout way of doing things, so why would I want to do that? Let's say now, I have a 10 item list that I want to sort with bubble sort. We know that in general, bubble sort takes n square time. That means for a list of 10 items, bubble sort is going to make 100 comparisons. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to break this list into two lists of 5 items. I'm still going to use bubble sort on each one of these buckets. So basically the time taken for this is 5 square plus 5 square. Notice that I'm only making 50 comparisons in total, not 100. Of course, calculating things like this isn't fully accurate and the reason for that is because I've actually left some things out. For example, when you're creating your buckets, you actually need to have an idea of what are the boundaries of the items within your list. For example, the unsorted list I use for all these videos is a list of 8 items from 1 to 8. If I were to write a sorting algorithm now that makes use of bucket sort, I need to somehow know this. If I hard code my algorithm to only work from numbers from 1 to 8, it's going to fail when someone gives me a list from 1 to 10, because then there are two items that don't get put into buckets, and they are eventually just lost altogether. The most naive implementation of bucket sort is going to of course make one pass through a list, it's going to find a minimum and maximum value, and then it can create its buckets around that. Of course then another issue is how many buckets do you want to create? Obviously, the more buckets you create, the less time you're going to take sorting each bucket. However, if you create a whole lot of buckets, that's going to take up a whole lot of space. Not to mention the process of actually selecting items out of the original list to put it into buckets also counts as comparisons. This means of course that if I have a list of items that run from 1 to 8, I cannot simply say, okay, I'm going to have 8 buckets and each one is going to take 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 all the way up to 8. The process of selecting the element to put into its appropriate bucket also takes time and your time complexity at the end of the day is going to be the same as selection sort because that is essentially what you're doing. Now there are of course many other implementations of bucket sort out there. Some actually make use of more sophisticated methods of actually slotting items into their respective buckets. For example through the use of hashing but that is slightly beyond the scope of the video we're doing today. So bucket sort is an interesting take on working around time complexity, but the process of sorting items into their respective buckets also takes up time, and that is something that must be taken into account. So formally speaking, in terms of time, the worst case time complexity for bucket sort is actually n square. This means of course it is still not foolproof, there are still times where it doesn't actually help. But in the average case, the time complexity is actually n plus k, K of course being the number of buckets that were created. And that's basically all there is for this episode. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, I appreciate every like, favorite and subscription you give me. 
But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV.